Hi everyone, it's Diane. Welcome, welcome. Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for popping by my channel to do a little paper crafting with me today. The first card that we're going to do is a fun fold card. This is very similar to a card that I did back in the fall. But when I had decided that I needed to do a fun fold card, I went to my, my favorite YouTube person that I like to watch for them, and that's Purple Girl Crafts. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the link to her card in the description box below so that you can go watch her video as well. <clears throat> Sorry. And see the cute little card that she makes with this tunnel fold. The one that we had done back in the fall, we made sort of rectangular cubes and layered our card on it and it folded closed and I can't remember what the name of that one was, but this card she gave some different dimensions. So I'm going to try it this way and see how it goes. I will put all of the card measurements, card stock measurements in the description box and so you'll be able to... Um, Go back and watch this again and have your cardstock all ready. And if you like it, I looked all over for these the other day and there's one laying in the jar right in front of me. <laughs> if you like the video, please make sure you hit that little like button down there below in the description, below the description box too, just to help promote the channel a little bit more. <clears throat> yep, so in our fun fold, we're using Awesome Otters. Awesome Otters was a free stamp set that we could get from Stampin' Up! during Celebration. I can't remember what year it was from. I do have to say it probably wasn't one of my favorite sets because two reasons. One, I couldn't figure out how to color them. <laughs> and second, there weren't any dyes and I'm not a fan of fussy cutting. But, so, to save you that torture, I did color him in and I already fussy cut him out. I colored uh, this little guy. I stamped him in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then I just colored it in using my alcohol markers. I uh, used uh, crumb cake for his body. And then I used markers. I used So Saffron and Mint Macaron to color his little party hat. <sighs> that just saved you know, probably half an hour watching me figure that out and cut the little guy out because I am not the fastest fussy cutter in the world. I originally did him just on plain white cardstock, but when I decided that I wanted to make him into a wobble card, I did another one and I did it on thick white cardstock so that it would be a little more substantial when I put him on the wobble. And that was when I went to Purple Girl Crafts to see how I could add my wobble to a card and have it be fun. And we're going to do that one first because it's, it's a little complicated. The second card will be out of Wishing You Well. And that's from the other end of my bookshelf as we're trying to complete this project of using all the stamp sets that I have on my shelf. So that one's going to be a lot easier. Awesome Otters. I'm using several different stamp sets. I'm going to use Awesome Otters and You Are Otterly Awesome as my greeting. Sorry, I know I have that horrible glare from my ring light. But then I pulled out Special Someone and I'm going to use the Happy Birthday off of this. And I also knew that I had some little um, die cut balloons in this, in this case from a card that I had done previously. So I cut out or I pulled out those die cut balloons because what is a party without balloons, right? Oh Lord, where did I put them over there? And when we get this card together, I'm going to try to have our otter holding the balloons. And if you can see, I have those balloons glued to a strip of acetate. Remember I tell you always save your acetate from your stamp sets because you can use them for stuff like this. I just used glue dots and glued them on there, and then used a Sharpie marker and drew some little strings on the acetate. And hopefully I'll figure out a way to get him to stick to his hand. Um, oh, 
And then this die for you are utterly awesome. Believe it or not, came from Garage Gears. I this was a car emblem or something that this die matched up to on the stamp set, but I just thought it kind of looked almost like a, a thought bubble and thought it might work putting it in this little tunnel card. I think she called this something else too. Um, tunnel card or something else. I can't remember what the other one was. I can't believe I found this little wobble in that jar. I searched high and low. I only have three left from Christmas. We use those. This is a bigger one. We use those to do our Christmas gnome card. And I only had a few left. So, our first layer of this is going to be on mint macaron. <clears throat> if you're using a pattern paper that has a directional pattern, make sure that you cut all three of your pieces in the same, or when you glue them on. <laughs> well, no, you have to cut them. If I had cut them this way and I was using the triangle side, I would have messed it up. So be careful if you're using directional patterns. My next layer is going to be just jade. And my third layer will be soft sea foam. And my back panel is the same as my front mint macaron. And I'll give you all these dimensions. Can I get rid of any of this? Oh, I did use um, dark smoky slate for his nose. And when we get it all together, I have my Winka Stella out because we might add some little glitter glitter. Okay. My base or my top layer. It's going to kind of look like this. I didn't put my um, otter in there yet, but, and I think that when I cut out my second circle, I want to cut it a little smaller. I think I want to see more of that green in the background. So we're going to use some nesting dies. You can use squares, ovals, circles, whatever you have. If you don't have those, you can just cut your circles out or squares with um, a craft knife cutting the one layer smaller than the second. So we'll start by getting our card base, which was nine inches by five inches. I scored it at one half of an inch, two inches, seven, and eight and a half. My designer series paper is four and three quarters by four and three quarters. And then you'll need two strips for these panels on the side, which are one and a quarter by four and three quarters. The two inside panels are six inches by five inches. On the six inch side, I scored at one half of an inch and five and a half inches. So everything's got these little half inch panels on the end. And then out of the same color as the front of your card, you'll need, what is this, five by five, I think? Oh, geez, where'd my measurements go? Yes, five by five, and that's gonna be just to glue onto the back of our card when we're all done. We're gonna start by adhering the center pattern paper. on our card front. <sighs> and I, I realized earlier when I started this, that I have to kind of concentrate because there's a lot of little pieces here and I don't really want to mess it up. So I'm just using my nesting circles, or layering circles. And which one did I use on the front? I think it was this one. I think, I think. Yep. And then I think I used this one on the inside, but I want to go down one more. I think that'll work fine. Get this 
centered on our paper. Mm -hmm. so I had my washi tape here. There it is. So welcome to my new subscribers. Nice to have you here. And welcome back to those of you who have been with me. Stick around till the end of this video because I've decided I need to do a giveaway. And I will explain that to you at the end. So I'm going to cut the front window out of my panel. Leave this for one minute. And if I'm real careful about that, I can save this for another project. Then my next layer, which is going to be just jade. I'm gonna line my half inch score line on each side up to our score mark on the front layer. They do line up just nice. Get those lined up. And then I'll be able to put my other circle, hopefully kind of even. I think it looks good. I'm trying to do this without getting my head in there. And then I can take my front panel off and we'll die cut the second circle out. Yeah, so if, if you've watched my channel, you know that I also like to um, make journals. Whether you want to call them junk journals or just journals or whatever. I do like to make those. And... So, of course, I have a billion pieces of paper that, and even for this card, oh yeah, the pattern paper that I'm using, I guess I should have said that, is out of the old pad of It's My Party by Stampin' Up. And this is one of those pads, I swear, it's never, it's never going to finish. I, every time I make party cards, I go to this paper because I love the designs in it, but it's just never going to finish. I have a ton of it. So I thought that <clears throat> some of you folks out there may not have quite the sash that I do. And so I want to share some of my papers and who knows what else maybe with somebody. Okay, front, there you are. So now we can start folding in some of our little flaps. We'll start with these half inch panels on the end. We're going to fold them all towards the back of our card. Remember this round window is gonna be the front. So everything is getting folded to the back. The same with our next layer. Poor Ella sitting outside my craft room door just crying. She wants to come in and play, but she keeps walking on the computer. And our back panel, we're also going to fold those back. <clears throat> okay. Then to start putting this card together, I wonder if I should put those on now. It probably isn't gonna hurt. I'm afraid once I get everything folded, it's gonna be too hard to adhere these, so. <clears throat> Aw, listen to the baby cry out there, huh? Oops. <laughs> 
<laughs> my hand stuck to the glue runner, the tape runner. Oh, well, that's not what I wanted to do. Turned out to be a pretty nice afternoon here for us. This is Sunday afternoon for me. I really started this card, oh geez, I don't even know what day, Thursday, Friday, something. I mean, getting all my instructions and having everything cut out. And then the weekend just got busy, 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 busy. And I never did get back up here to put it together and do my videos. So I had to kind of think through all of this before I started the camera, remind, remind myself what I'm doing. Okay, oh, now we're going to use the back panels first. And this is the one that we did not die cut. I'm gonna use a liquid glue so that I can move this around if need be. Hopefully I can get it pretty straight and not have to move it too much because I don't want it to be sticky on the inside and end up Oh, my card shut. And I'm going to take the edge of that little half inch flap and line it up to the score line that is a half an inch in from the outside edge on our front panel. Try to keep it all going straight. Now I can take <clears throat> the panel that we did die cut, take this half inch strip, I'm going to add glue and I'm going to line it up against the edge of our back one, our back panel. And trying to keep this going straight the rest of the card because this is going to fold up and fit into an envelope and I don't I don't remember if I said um, we did a card similar to this in the fall I think I said it already So now we have the start of our little, it's almost like a shadow box, okay. And this will be our front. Yeah, I think I like that green showing a little bit more. Well, I have a terrible shadow, don't I? Okay, so now I want to pretend like we're folding our card closed this guy out of the way first because now we want to glue our center one in on the opposite side. I'm just a little crooked. I thought I had that lined up pretty good. What the heck? Oh, I just got glue on that. Use my little glue eraser and get them off of there. So, closing my card, laying that flap down, can glue it in place. Remember, Tombow stays a little tacky, so I get some glue in there. I'm going to try to get it off as quickly as I can so I don't get my card stuck. Okay. Now, while this is also folded, and when I say it's folded shut, I, I mean sort of like from the front, our card is closed. It's going to pop back open. Now I'm closing it. 
I'm going to adhere this last half inch panel, which should line up right up against my other score line. And then when we're all done, wipe all that glue off. We have this. Okay. We're going to use that back five inch square panel just to glue on those half inch flaps to make the back part of our card. That'll give you some place to write a little message or sign your name. Yep, I thought I was all organized and ready to go. I was going to do my video on Saturday. And then Friday evening, my daughter-in-law called and asked if I um, was free Saturday. They were going to uh, a benefit breakfast, and one of the gal's children got sick and wasn't able to make it. So she asked if I would like to go, and yes, of course I would. Oh, I already had plans in the afternoon to go to a pasta making workshop with a couple of my friends. So, hurried up and went to the breakfast, ran home and changed my clothes, went out to the pasta workshop, and then came home and cooked the pasta and the sauce for hubby. He was, he was pretty happy with it, but boy, hectic day. Okay, so I'm sure I have my thick cardstock one, and I'll be able to add my little otter in here. We'll figure out how he's going to hold the balloons and keep it inside that circle. And oh, look, that's going to fit right around that circle. I can't even plan that. Oh, how am I going to do this? I'll have to have happy birthday over here and put the balloons in his right hand, I believe. Hmm. I want everything to show. Or maybe I could do it on this layer. There you go. That's thinking. Okay. So we have to put Mr. Otter down first. I guess I will use liquid glue. And I don't trust myself, so where are my tweezers? Because... Once I get my fat fingers in there, he might not go where I want him to go. Oh, come on. Don't run out now. Oh, what am I doing? I don't want to glue him anyways. Oh, good Lord. We're doing a wobble. That was the whole point of this, wasn't it? Jeez. Am I, like, getting super old? I forgot that quick. My goodness. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Right. And the wobble's sitting right in front of me. What a ding-dong. Come on, come on, you could do it. This isn't supposed to be the hardest part. It always is, though. When you're getting these re-waste papers off of stuff, it's always so hard. Oh, and you're not coming off. What are you doing? What are you doing? There we go. Yeah, I never really um, promoted the brand of wobbles that I had gotten. And I just ordered them from Amazon. 
I'm, I'm sure you can get them at your local craft store as well. But this package that I had gotten um, when, when they came, the package was open. A bunch of the wobbles were broken. So this time we're going to try a different one. I have to hold this up for a minute so I can make sure I get him to be able to see him. Can I fit him this way? Yeah. Yes, I will. Oh, leave room for his balloons. Oh, come on now. Come on, coordinated. There he is. Oh, he's a cutie. Aw, I think I didn't like doing the otter stamps before. Shame on me. I don't know why I put that away. Because now we have to... could do it with a glue dot. Maybe I'll trim a little bit of that acetate off and make it shorter. I don't think I can move my balloons down too much and make it shorter that way because I might not have enough room. Just manipulate them a little bit until they fit where I want them to go. <laughs> I'll make it work. Okay. Those are a little shorter. That'll work. Glue dot. Oh, look at me doing it the hard way, right? Just... Aww. That's cute! Oh, I didn't even plan on that to pop off. There, that's probably safer. <laughs> okay. And then we'll put our happy birthday over here. I think I'm just going to use glue dots again because they're pretty sturdy. <clears throat> and that way I can make sure that it's sticking to that panel. When it opens and closes, I'm only putting glue dots on the one side. Sorry, i got to hold it up here so I can see what I'm doing. Get it straight. Oh, let's move it. Aww. And then this we will put over here on the corner. Oh, Ella, you're fine. No, because you walk on the computer. <laughs> yeah, so um, thanks to Shauna at Purple Girl Crafts for giving us a new way to make one of these cards. I always like watching her. She, and she doesn't use stamps. She draws her own images. I mean, amazing. So look, look at this. 
and it does fold up. So we can put this into an envelope. Isn't that just cute? Very cute and not too hard. Okay. The second one done so that we, oh, I forgot to, not quite there, Ta-da! forgot to sparkle his balloons. Yeah, we have our workshop coming up Tuesday. So the ladies that are coming, I have the stuff all ready to go. Oh, it's not too bad. Cutesy. What? Then, now I gotta get it out of the way. Let's do wishing you well. This one is going to have just a standard old olive card base that was an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock that is cut in half and then scored down the center and folded in half to give us a four and a quarter by a five and a half inch base. Standard for us. And then out of the new Dainty Flowers, how it's called, Dainty Flowers, which is a freebie from Stampin' Up! right now. Uh, yeah, true February then. Oh, you only got a little bit of time if you wanted to. Yep, February 28th. You can still earn this paper for free. And I had to hurry up and get an order in there so I could get some more of this so that I had enough because that's one of the papers we're using for our workshop. So I chose the little ferny green side to do this because I want to make this little bouquet with some flowers on the top. And we'll do that on a piece of very vanilla that I have cut out just from a piece of scrap using a color and contour stamp set. I'm sorry, that's the stamp that set that this coordinates with. These are these, oh my goodness, I can't talk. Scalloped contours dies. There, that's all they are. <laughs> Scalloped contour dies. All right, and I have old olive ink somewhere. Yes, I do. My stamp pad. I keep my little measurement paper there so that I can list all of those. And I tried several different variations of this flower. I did decide I want to stamp off on time. Oh, because I inked my stamp pad and now it's really really inky so we're gonna stamp off once yeah that's pretty dark and if I remember right I think, is this one of those distinctive stamp sets where it doesn't make like real deep impressions, you know, um, I shouldn't say deep, detailed images when you stamp. They're kind of, I don't know, I want to say a little artsy, maybe. And then the flowers, I'm using Fresh Freesia. And so again, because this is one of those more distinctive stamp sets, they don't line up exactly. And then I used the little bow which we're also going to do in Fresh Freesia. And you'll really be able to see 
but I mean isn't that bow the bow is just what does it really does I was thinking to myself, why do I have my alcohol marker out? Because I sort of was thinking too, when I get this all together, I might want to add a few rhinestones. Well, I couldn't find any of the fresh freesia rhinestones. And so, as long as you have just your clear basic rhinestones. You can make your own, whatever color you want it to be. Oh, I forgot, what was I gonna do with um, my sentiment? Wishing you well. I think we were gonna die cut those is what I was gonna do. I thought wishing you well would be good for either a get well card, a note card, a whatever other card. And it's such a pretty little font. I think that was one of the best. That and the bow. The font and the bow out of this set, I think, were really. It's got a cute little wreath. In it that you can use for um, Christmas and actually has seasons greetings that you can use on there too. I know I've used the little bouquet. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know why I'm going horse again. No idea. If I'd have really been thinking, I think I have a fresh freesia ribbon, but that's okay. We're gonna make some rhinestones. <clears throat> I don't think I need them both. This is still out of the scallop contour dies. Remember, you can do these card layouts with pretty much any stamp set and paper and um, dies that you might have if you don't have the skull of contour dies. Uh, did I take all my little pokey tools down there too? It's always so hard when it's workshop week. Take out the little lacy holes. We could put this card together. Yeah, so if you don't have these, you might have, um, oh, what are those other ones that I always like? Oh, Stitch So Sweetly. That would be pretty. Um, dimensionals because we're gonna put this layer up. I will layer the pretty designer series paper flat to my card base. And this is um, four and one eighth by five and three eighths. Add some foam dimensionals to the back. Ugh. 
little papers flying around everywhere. Center that. I chose uh, Very Vanilla with this paper because it almost has a watercolory background and you know watercolor paper isn't always white white. So I thought the Very Vanilla might might just be prettier. So I'm going to put that down there. Yeah, I don't want to cover up the stems too much so I need to put a dimensional on the bottom corner that's going to sit on the card base and then a little bit of adhesive where it's going to stick to the image. And then, again, because I couldn't find any freezer rhinestones. Come on, jeez. The things that are not supposed to be hard. You can use your alcohol marker and color your rhinestones to match whatever card you want them to be. I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera. But I will show you what it does. And this is Dark Fresh Freesia. see the difference in the colors? Can you see the pink on there? Not real well. Hmm. Well, it's there. It turned them pink. It's going to have to take my word for it. And I think I'm going to just add them to some of these little flowers. I don't want them to look like I put them in a row. <gasps> Turn that upside down. Okay, so as far as a giveaway, because I do have so much stuff from the journals and card making, if you would like me to share some of that stuff with you, and this is going to have to be in the United States only, I'm afraid, because some of my paper is coffee dyed and tea dyed. And I understand that that causes problems when you try to ship it to other countries. So I don't know why, but I'm not going to try to cause trouble for anybody. So, and I want to make sure you get your package. So in order to get this package from me, all you have to do is to like this video because this is the one that I will go back to to pick a winner. Share the video and in the comments tell me if you are strictly a card maker or do you make cards and journals both and some of the supplies that you wish you had more of in your stash so that I could maybe share some of the things that I have with you. I'd love to share. And here are our two cards for today. So if you want to participate in the giveaway, I will um, go back on March 17th to this video. And I'm going to say March 17th because that's probably about when I'll be doing my video for that upcoming Monday. So, um, that March 17th, we will pick a winner. And 
this will be from the February 27th video. Okay, remember you have to like, share, and comment what kind of supplies you would like to have some more of in your stash. How's that? And so I don't know what that Monday is. Where's my phone? There it is. Let's see. So if we March 17th, so this will be on March 20th video. And that's when we'll announce our winner. So get your little comments in there. Like and subscribe. And I'll send you some stuff. And it could be all kinds of stuff. There will be a stamp set. And maybe a die set to coordinate. And papers. And maybe some ink. We'll just see what all I can come up with. Until then, you guys all just have a lovely week. Thanks for being with me. And I hope you like the cards. Go make a card. See ya. Bye.